Thunder Alley is a game for two to seven players where each player controls a team of three to six cars competing to score the most points in one or a series of stock car races. The focus of the game is on team racing, in other words, winning a race with one of your cars is important, but to increase your chance at scoring the most points and winning the game, you must maximize the performance of the other cars in your team. The game includes four racetracks printed on two double-sided mounted boards. The racetracks are Junta Brothers Velodrome, a four-lap race in a typical oval-shaped track, St. Adriana Speedway, a two-lap race in a four-lane track, Vern's Grove, a two-lap race where the track has at times two and then three lanes with a tricky one-lane section and Pullinger's Pyramid, three laps on a three-lane track. There are 42 car counters, that is six cars for each of the seven teams. Car counters are printed on both sides, with a lighter background color on one side and a darker background color on the other. The background color is used to distinguish which cars have been activated in a turn. There are counters that come in two sizes, half-inch and fifth-eighths of an inch. These serve as markers for various game functions. There is a deck of 84 race cards. The race cards are the heart of the game and they determine the type of movement that cars can perform when they are activated. There are also 26 event cards that include events such as accidents, yellow flags, worsening track situations and deteriorating cars. There are also seven team sheets. These are player aids that are used to keep the status of each of the team's cars, including keeping track of any temporary or permanent wear markers that a car may receive. Let's see how the game plays. Each racetrack is divided into sectors and spaces. A sector is a series of side-by-side -side spaces on the track, extending from the apron to the outside wall. The apron is the yellow lane on the inside of the track. Cars may only enter the apron to make a pit stop. For positioning purposes, cars on the inside of a sector are always considered to be ahead of cars outside of them in the same sector, except that cars in the pits, that is, in the apron, are always considered behind all other cars in the same sector. In this example, green 22, yellow 43, and blue 15 are each on different spaces of the same sector. Because green 22 is in the inside lane, it is considered to be ahead of yellow 43, which in turn is considered ahead of blue 15, which is in the apron. Each racetrack also includes various player aids, such as a sequence of play outline, a chart summarizing the speed penalties and movement types, a lap track, and spaces where to place event cards and race cards. To set up the game first, a track is selected for play. Each player selects a team. Cars are selected for each team depending on the number of players. For instance, in a four-player game, each player selects four cars. The race card and event card decks 
are prepared and placed on the board. A race card is drawn and cars are placed on the racetrack using the team bar at the bottom of the card. The team bar is read from left to right and a car of each of the participating teams is placed in that order. After all the teams have placed their first car, the same card is now read from right to left and each team now places its second car in this reverse order. Players continue alternating reading the team bar from left to right and then from right to left until all cars have been placed. All cars start with their light background side showing. The current lap marker is placed on the number one space. Enough position markers are taken so that there is one marker for each car in play and they are lined up first place on the left and last place on the right. The player with the car in the pole position, the number one position, receives the first player marker. The race cards are then dealt to each player. The number of cards each player receives is equal to the number of cars that they start the game with plus one. In our four player game, because each player starts with four cars, they are each dealt five race cards. Let's take a look at the sequence of play. A full turn consists of each player activating all of his cars once in what is called an action segment. The first action segment is performed by the player holding the first player marker. After this player completes his action segment, play proceeds with the player to his left. The active player selects one of his cars that has not yet been activated in this turn, and he can do one of several things. The player may play a race card for the activated car, which will move based on its speed and the card's movement type. If the car chosen is out of the race, the player passes his turn. If the car chosen has six or more wear markers in its holding box, the car is retired from the race. The player can also voluntarily retire a car from the race. This decision may prove worthwhile in cases where the retired car has many permanent wear markers. By retiring the car, the player has more card options for the remaining cars he has in the race. How do these race cards work? Let's take a closer look starting with the cards themselves. At the top of the card is a box with the name of the card. The background color indicates if the activated car will suffer any wear as a result of playing this card. Only if the background color is white will the car suffer no wear. This number is the on-track speed, that is, the number of movement points that the activated car must spend. The smaller number is the pit exit speed, which is the number of movement points to be used if the car is exiting the pits. The card indicates here which type of movement the activated car will perform. This paragraph is the spotter instructions, that is, special effects that occur as a consequence of playing this card. And at the bottom of the card is the team bar, a game mechanic used to resolve various situations in the game where an element of randomness is needed. Let's take a look at the basics of movement. It costs one movement point for the active car to enter each empty space on the track, moving either forward or sideways. Diagonal moves are only allowed during the play of a specific race card. In this example, red 29 moves 7 spaces, paying 1 movement point per space entered. In this game, there are two types of displacement, lateral displacement and forward displacement. Let's take a look at lateral displacement. Red 29 will use lateral displacement to move into the space occupied by Lavender 21. Red pays two movement points and Lavender is displaced to the side in the same direction as Red 29 is moving. Now let's assume that Red 29 will move into Lavender 21 space and Lavender 21 occupies a space next to the wall. This time Lavender 21 is displaced one space back. Now let's take a look at forward displacement. 
it costs three movement points to move forward into an occupied space. The car originally in the space is displaced by moving one space forward. In this forward displacement example, pink 23 is activated and it pays three movement points to move into green 22 space, which displaces in a forward direction green 22 and in turn yellow 43. Now assuming that pink 23 is using solo movement, it can move one space laterally in front of lavender 21 and continue moving until it spends its last movement point and it is flipped to its other side. Let's look at the types of movement. There are four types of movement in this game. Draft movement, pursuit movement, lead movement, and solo movement. Before discussing the various types of movement, it is important to understand the concept of linking. Cars that are in the same lane and adjacent to one another are considered linked to one another that is, in line or racing nose to tail. When a linked active car moves, all the linked cars move also, as stated in the rules. The most common type of movement in the game is draft movement. When a car uses draft movement and there are cars linked to it, the whole line of linked cars is moved. A note about draft movement cards. Some of the draft movement cards prohibit any lateral movement, like the card here to the right. And this is the card we will use in the next example. Blue 15 moves forward one space, and green 22 follows along. Now blue 15 is also linked to black 28 and yellow 43, and now all four cars move together. And they continue moving forward, they cannot change lanes, until blue 15 spends its last movement point and it is flipped to its other side. Note that the other cars that moved as part of the draft line are not flipped. A car activated with draft movement may move laterally and could displace cars as much as desired before beginning forward movement. During this initial lateral movement, Cars ahead or behind are not considered linked. Once forward movement begins, linkage to the cars ahead and in the rear is automatic and lateral movement is no longer allowed. Let's take a look at an example of lateral displacement in draft movement. Here the activated car is blue 15. Blue 15 pays two movement points to move into green 22's space. And by doing so, it not only pushes green 22 to the side, but it pushes red 29 and black 28 back one space. Now, blue 15 expends two movement points to laterally move into green 22's space, pushing green 22, red 29, and black 28 back one space. Now, blue 15 moves forward, and all linked cars also move along until blue 15 expends its last movement point and it is flipped to its other side. The next type of movement is pursuit movement. This works the same way as draft movement with a small difference. Cars behind the active car are never considered to be linked and are not pulled along with the active car as it moves forward. Here red 29 is activated with pursuit movement. It moves one space forward, leaving blue 15 behind, but linking now with yellow 43 and pink 23. The three cars continue moving and cannot change lanes, until red 29 expends its last movement point and is then inverted. The next type of movement is lead movement. Here the activated car moves and any cars linked behind the leader will follow the leader. In lead movement the active car can move laterally and all linked cars behind it will follow. In this example green 22 is activated with lead movement. Because linking is determined only at the start of movement Yellow 43, pink 23, and red 29 will be linked to green 22. 
Green 22 moves one space sideways and the other cars follow move by move. And they continue to follow Green 22 until Green 22 expends its last movement point, in which case it is then flipped to its other side. There are special rules for draft lines and corners. When a draft line enters a corner, and there is a choice of which lane of the corner to enter, the active player chooses the lane, and the draft line will follow. Similarly, when a draft line exits a corner, and there is a choice of multiple lanes to enter, the active player chooses the lane, and the draft line will also follow. In this example, blue 15 is activated in a corner with draft movement. Blue 15 can choose one of two lanes. If it chooses the lane with Lavender 21 and Red 29, it will move forward those cars. However, Blue chooses the empty lane outside of the corner as the draft line, thereby avoiding to push Red 29 and Lavender 21. And Blue is flipped after finishing its activation. In this example, Green 22 is activated in a corner with lead movement. Yellow 43 must be linked, but the green team can choose either lane outside the corner for the draft line. In this case, they pick the lane with pink 23 to avoid having to move lavender 21 and black 28. After the action phase has concluded, we proceed to the end of turn sequence. Here, the car marked with the leader marker is given a turn leader marker which is placed in its holding box on the team sheet. If more than one car is tied for the lead, each of them receives a turn leader marker. After awarding turn leader markers, we draw and resolve an event card. Then perform pit stops, and then we assign the first player marker to the player whose car has the leader marker on it. After that, lapped cars are removed, and finally, players can discard any or all unwanted race cards in their hand. At the end of turn sequence, we award turn leader markers to the car or cars that are in the lead. When multiple cars are tied for the lead, we give a leader marker to each one of them. And for these purposes, in this example, we have blue 15 and yellow 43 are both leading the race and would both get turn leader markers. Car number 15 has the inside lane, so blue 15 would be the first player next turn. The accumulation of wear markers represents the general wear and tear placed on the car throughout the race. Wear markers are received when race cards are played. The card name, background color, and wear indicator of a race card show the type of wear marker that the activated car receives. When a car receives a wear marker, it is placed in the active car's holding box after the car has been moved. Here, Lavender 21 will use lead movement, linking Yellow 8, who will follow along. It has to spend six movement points. One, two, three, four, five, and six, end in its activation, so we flip the car counter to its other side, and now we apply the wear to the car, in this case, a fuel marker. And a fuel marker, is placed on the team display for Lavender 21. Temporary wear markers like tire and fuel markers can be removed by making a pit stop. There are two general types of wear markers in the game. Permanent wear markers represented by 5 eighths of an inch counters and temporary wear markers represented by half inch counters. There are permanent wear markers for suspension, transmission, serious body wear, and engine wear. There are temporary wear markers for tires, suspension, body wear, and fuel. If a car receives six wear markers, the car is retired from the race. If this happens, the car is placed on the team sheet, and the team is awarded the lowest position marker still available. 
When a car is activated and has three or more temporary or permanent wear markers, the car suffers a speed penalty. With three markers, minus three speed. Four markers, minus four speed. And five markers, minus five to its speed. These speed penalties only affect a car when it is activated. So for instance, a car being moved by draft movement during another car's activation does not have its movement affected. Also, speed penalties do not apply when the activated car is exiting the pits, since the car is using pit speed here. After all cars have been activated in a turn, an event card is drawn by the player possessing the first player marker. The instructions on the card are followed, and if no car meets the requirements for the event, it is ignored. If more than one car qualifies for the event, turn over the next race card from the deck and refer to the team bar to resolve the tie. Each event card has a flag icon in its top rightmost corner. It can be yellow, green or red. A yellow flag causes a restart, a green flag does not. A red flag, however, ends the race. After an event is resolved, each team may decide to pit. Making a pit stop removes all temporary wear markers from the pitting car. The player holding the first player marker decides whether he will pit or not, followed by the player to his left, and so on. The procedure to conduct a pit stop depends on the color of the event's flag. In this example, the marbles event has just been resolved. This card shows a green flag. Green 22 has a total of three wear markers, two temporary and one permanent. Because green 22 has three wear tokens, its speed is reduced by three. Green 22 elects to make a pit stop under a green flag. The car drops straight down to the apron and then moves backward five spaces and all temporary wear markers are removed from green 22 in the team display. After a green flag pit stop, a car returns to the track when it is activated in its next movement phase, using the pit exit speed value of the race card played. Continuing with this example, in green 22's next activation, the green team plays this card, a solo movement card, for the purpose of exiting Green 22 from the pits. So Green 22 has two movement points and the first movement point is expended to move to the side using solo movement and then the second movement point is spent to move forward one space, ending Green 22's activation. Now let's take a look at the yellow flag pit procedure. Yellow 43 Blue 15 and Red 29 decide to make a pit stop under a yellow flag. Yellow 43 is moved to the apron, as well as Blue 15 and Red 29. Note that Red 29 is placed on top of Blue 15 because it is the outside car. Next, the players remove temporary wear markers from the pitting cars. After all cars have made their pit stops, then a restart under yellow occurs. In this example, the event brush the wall has been resolved and it causes a yellow flag restart. Note that there are cars on the track and cars in the pits. First, we line up the cars on the track in running order. Note that green 22 is the leader and is already in the inside lane. Pink 23 is placed beside Green 22. Lavender 21 is placed behind Green 22. Now all cars with lapped car markers would be lined up at the end of the pack in running order, and then we would remove the lapped car markers. Next, we conduct any yellow flag pit stops and remove all temporary wear markers from the pitting cars. Next, the cars in the pits are placed back on the restart lanes in running order. Yellow 43 is placed beside Lavender 21. Blue 15 is placed behind Lavender 21. 
and red 29 is placed beside blue 15. In each of the tracks there is a green restart line. If a restart is called for and the lead car is within seven spaces from the finish line and it is the last lap of the race, once the restart line is created it is moved back behind the green restart line. In this example a restart has been called for and the lead car is green 22 and it is five spaces from the finish line in the last lap. So we follow the procedure to create the restart line and now it is moved back behind the green restart line. When the car possessing the leader marker moves into the same sector as another car, that car is considered lapped. In this example, blue 15 is the leader and green 22 and pink 23 have been passed and are now a lap down. At the end of the turn, both cars will be removed and pink 23 will get the lowest position marker remaining and 22 will get the next highest. So if this happens, both cars are placed on the respective team sheets and pink 23 receives the lowest available place marker. In this example, the 21st place. At the end of the game, this marker will earn the pink team 23 victory points. Now green 22 receives the next lowest position marker available, 20th place worth 24 victory points. The first car that crosses the finish line after completing the required number of laps is the winner. The first place marker and a turn leader marker are given to this car and the car is placed on the team sheet. The race will end when the current action phase is finished. As cars cross the finish line, they are awarded the next highest available position marker. When the action phase is complete, cars that have not crossed the finish line are awarded position markers based on the running order. There are various ways to score points in the game. A bonus point marker is given to each car with at least one turn leader marker. A most laps led marker is given to the car with the most turn leader markers and this adds one point to the team total. Each player also adds up the number of points for their position markers and bonus point markers. The player with the highest combined team total wins. In this example, Green 22 plays this card working the pack. With this card, the active car may exchange places with any car that it is directly behind for one movement point and it may pass multiple cars in this manner on a single turn. For the first movement point, green 22 swaps positions with blue 15. For the second movement point, green 22 moves ahead one space, leaving blue 15 behind. And for the last two movement points, green 22 swaps spaces with black 28 and yellow 43. And now it is in front of the pack. In this example, green 22 is activated and plays this lead movement card. Moving one space to the side with blue 15, yellow 43 and red 29 following move by move. Now green 22 decides to move laterally into pink 23's space. Here a unique situation occurs because normally a laterally displaced car has to move backwards but that would break the line of linked cars. So instead of displacing pink 23 backwards, pink 23 has to be displaced forward. Now let's talk about bumping. A car with one or two movement points remaining is never required to move laterally to use all its movement points. It can spend its remaining movement points in an unsuccessful displacement. Here, red 29 moves forward and now has two movement points remaining. It could spend its last two movement points to move laterally and displace Lavender 21 or it could spend its last two movement points by bumping into Yellow 43 and no movement occurs because three movement points are necessary to displace Yellow 43. This type of bumping is only allowed at the end of movement. 
I hope that this video gives you a good idea of how Thunder Alley plays. There is much more in this game in terms of strategy for changing situations on the track than those covered here. Because of this game's unique movement mechanics, where multiple cars move at the same time, the game is very fluid, and because of the car-driven nature of the game system, replayability is high. This game rewards the player who can maximize his team's performance, although let's face it, winning a race feels pretty good. Well, this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Hope to see you on the racetrack. Thanks for watching.